Welcome to Golden Software's video training for Surfer. Surfer is a versatile gridding, contouring, and surface mapping software package. In this video, I will cover the basics of interpolating XYZ data to produce a grid file. 10 of the 14 map types in Surfer are created from grid files. A grid file is made up of grid nodes or cells. Each grid node has a calculated Z value associated with it, and the nodes are evenly spaced in the X and Y directions. You can download grid files like DEMs from the internet, produce grid files and other software packages, or you can interpolate irregularly spaced data points with XYZ values in Surfer to produce a grid file. To grid a data file in Surfer, click Home, Grid Data, Grid Data. In the Dataset 1 section, I will select a data file. To grid a data file in Surfer, the file must contain one column for each X, Y, and Z data, and it must be saved in a supported data file format, such as a text file, a CSV file, or an Excel spreadsheet. If the data was already open in Surfer's worksheet, or as a post or base map, we could select the file from the dropdown. Instead, I will click Browse, select the data file, and click Open. In most cases, the default gridding parameters are suitable and you can simply click Skip to End to create the grid file. However, you can fully customize your gridding options to create the best grid possible for your data. Here, we will discuss a few of the more basic options that you can set. In the Data Column section of the Grid Data dialog, you can specify which columns in your data file are the X, Y, and Z columns. If you can't recall which data columns are which, you can click the View Data button to open a preview of your data. Additionally, in this section you can filter your data and choose to generate data statistics or grid statistics reports. In the Gridding Method section, you can choose from one of 13 available gridding methods. What you choose for the gridding method will depend greatly on your data and what you would like the output to look like. There is no one best gridding method to use for all data sets or for a particular type of industry. However, there are some instances where gridding methods may be more suitable than others. The default gridding method, Krieging, produces a good looking map for the majority of data sets, but it is not an exact interpolator. It can extrapolate grid values beyond your data's original Z range. If Krieging doesn't support your needs, we have numerous online and help resources aimed at helping you determine which gridding method to use. Once you have selected a gridding method, you can access additional options for the gridding method by clicking the Next button. The Output Grid Geometry section allows you to specify the extents and resolution of the grid file. If you need the grid to be an exact size, you can set particular X and Y minimum and maximum values. Or, if you already have a grid with the desired limits, you can select that grid in the Copy Geometry From field to apply the limits to the output grid. You can also specify the grid resolution by either setting the grid spacing or by setting the number of nodes. These two values are tied together, so the fewer the grid nodes, the larger the grid spacing, and vice versa. By default, Surfer sets 100 grid nodes in the longest direction and uses approximately the same spacing to compute the number of nodes for the shorter direction. You can increase the number of nodes up to 2 billion grid nodes in each direction. However, the computer will likely run out of memory before you can create a grid that large. In the Grid Z Limit section and next to it, you can limit the Z values in a grid file, and you can choose to apply a logarithmic transform to those values. The Assign No Data Outside Convex Hull of Data option assigns no data values to the grid nodes outside of the convex hull of the data. The convex hull is the outer perimeter of your data points. If you imagine your page as a wooden board and your data points are nails hammered into that board, a rubber band wrapped around all of the nails represents the convex hull. Uncheck this box to extrapolate the grid data to the maximum and minimum grid limits. Check the box to only grid within the convex hull of the data. If you choose to assign no data outside of convex hull of data, there is also the option to inflate or deflate the convex hull. Below this section, we have the option to add a no data polygon boundary here. 
you can select a polygon in the base layer or import a vector file, such as a DXF or shapefile, to use to assign no data inside, outside, or a mix to the output grid. The output grid section allows you to specify the output grid name, file path, and file type. By default, Surfer will create a Surfer grid file with the same name as the data file and located in the same directory as the data file. However, you can change these defaults by clicking on the yellow open folder icon. You also have the option to create the grid report, which will show you the grid statistics. You can choose to add your grid as a layer to a new map, or if a map object already exists, you can add the new map as a layer. You can also choose to create the grid without opening it as a map by unchecking Add Grid Layer 2. You can also specify which layer type you'd like to create with the output grid. Lastly, click the Save Settings button to save these grid settings for future use. You can load these settings on the first page of the Grid Data dialog. When you are finished setting your gridding parameters, click OK to create the grid file. You will be notified when the grid file is created and, if you choose to open the grid, you will see the map open in the plot window. This grid can be used to create any grid-based map type you desire, calculate volumes and areas, and perform other grid functions. This concludes the video training for gridding data in Surfer. If you have any additional questions, please contact Golden Software.